Welcome to Chef AJ Live. I'm your host, Chef AJ, and this is where I introduce you to amazing people like you who are doing great things in the world that I think you should know about. My guest today is Steve Shore, and he is the founder of an amazing 17-day absolutely free online experience with all of your favorite speakers, so many of them who you know in the plant-based world, and I'd like to welcome him to the show. Thank you so much for coming on. Thank you, Chef AJ, and thank you for giving me an opportunity to speak to you and to your audience. Yeah, this is the first time we're meeting. I mean, I've known about you because I've, I've never attended your conference in person, in which it was in person before the pandemic, but it, I mean, it's just, it's just fabulous. Where did you get such a brilliant idea? Well, I think about 10 years ago, I asked Brian Clement if he would do our conference, and we did a weekend conference, Friday night, Saturday, and Sunday, and he spoke like 10 times. And it was live and we thought it went well. And the next year we moved it to New York City and we had about 10 speakers. And then we said, wow, this is great, but a weekend's not enough time. So we started the 10 day conference and we did that um, live for another uh, five, five, six years, five years. Um, And then that was seven years of the conference. And then last year we were forced to do it virtually. And so it was a 10 day conference. This year, I decided that we wanted to get to all of these speakers. There were so many speakers that had written a book with urgent information. And so we made it into a 17-day conference. And like all the other conferences, it's 100% free to everyone. The replay is 100% free. The live stream is free. And all the YouTube videos are free. So this is meant to get this information out into the mainstream, out into the world. How are you able to do it for free? And it's, it's like, that's more than half a month, 17 days. Right. Um, well, we have two ways you know, to, to take in revenue. We get a little revenue from YouTube, and we also have a premium membership club for $7 a month where we sum up the most important information from the 17 days and make those into special documentary videos. We sell that as our premium membership club for $7 a month. So this way, everyone has access to the conference. Everyone has access to the live stream. Everyone has access to the replays. We even have a membership club where you can sort by filters that's free. The only thing we charge for is if you want us to watch it for you and then organize that data into special documentaries that's part of our premium membership club. It's not very easy to do for free. And in addition to it being free, We have no sponsors, we have no advertisers, and we sell no products because we feel that in order to make this completely in integrity with no chance that we are biased towards someone or something because they're a sponsor of ours, we stopped having all sponsors and now we are completely just paid for by our viewers. That's incredible. So, Steve, why are you so passionate about this information? Were you touched by any kind of um, illness in your family or or why do you care so much about this? Um, I think the truth is that I am completely outraged that we think it's okay, and we means everyone, we're all somehow in this, including me, um, to withhold accurate information about health from adults and children. And we continue to sell uh, products that or do things that we know are destroying the environment, we know are destroying our health. And while it's okay to sell cigarettes because we tell people the truth, everyone knows that cigarettes are an issue and are bad for your lungs. So it's kind of feels like cigarettes are an integrity because they, they cause a problem, but everyone knows it. So then it's up to an individual to decide if they want to smoke or not. But there's a lot of other things that were kind of misleading people, was telling them that they're better, we're overemphasizing the benefits, we're not telling them the downside. And there are people writing these amazing books, unbelievable books that are just breathtaking with the latest science and data. And for whatever reason, they're not making it to the mainstream. In other words, they're not, you know, it's fantastic that Chef AJ has these great speakers. You're amazing. Your show is fantastic. Um, You should get an award. It's amazing that the real truth about health has these speakers. But the real crisis is why is every news media in the country not having the exact speakers that we're having on? They're sharing critical information that kids and adults need to know. And our speakers are not normally 
on the mainstream. And if they are, it's only a little bit here and there. And um, I think that it's important to get more face time and more viewership for people who are doing great work and providing accurate, unbiased science in the fields of health, nutrition, the food system, the medical system, and the environment. Now, let me just say this. <clears throat> it's one thing to say, look, we need accurate information, but that's not really what I'm saying. I'm not saying I'm a crusader because I want people to know about the difference between a small change and in, in something that has very little effect. What I'm trying to say is there are huge catastrophic things that are not being addressed. So it's not like um, a mild thing that Shauna Swan wrote a book called Countdown and said, oh, by the way, the sperm counts have gone down almost 60% in the last 40 years. And now we have climate change and species extinction and the obesity rate went from under 10% to over 40%. And that one out of three people in America have diabetes or prediabetes, that the autism rate was one in 10,000. Now it's officially like one in 45 or less. There are so, you know, every issue that Alzheimer's, that like almost half the people over 85 have dementia, you know, on and on. As you read the statistics that young people, their first, we have a, the sperm count crisis that means that it'll be harder to get pregnant and harder for people to reproduce. That's a scary thing. And then second, that when they are born, we're having an autism crisis, that it keeps going down and you know we're not paying attention to it. And then when people get, and then there's all these other childhood illnesses. Beth Lambert speaks about allergies and asthma and AGHT and autism and um, all these other health issues for children, how they've skyrocketed. So we've had birth, we have all these problems with getting pregnant, not getting autism, had childhood health issues. And then as people get older, we have an obesity and diabetes crisis. Then as people get really old, we have an Alzheimer's crisis. And now they're saying the fastest growing neurodegenerative, di neurodegenerative disease is Parkinson's. So we have all these health things going on. And all while this is happening, we have a species extinction and climate change and food and water shortage issue. And all the things that I'm saying are a crisis. And there's all these other um, statistics we're not mentioning, but it's worse because the things that we think are causing this are increasing, meaning we're doing more. It's not, not hear this information. And now we're radically changing our behavior and everything's about to get better. We're amping it up. There's more chemicals and more sugar and more animal products than ever. And, um, you know, we're and more greenhouse gases and more everything. We are everything that we think is causing these health and environmental pro problems. We're doing even more. It's not like we've slowed down. No one should be under the illusion that we got a good grip on it. We know what's going on and everything's good. And that whole sperm count thing is over and the insect ap apocalypse and the pollinators dying that these things are OK. We're literally ignoring them. And the media who we should be reporting on them is friends with big industries and we're going you know, full on. I mean, if you mention the topic of wireless radiation or 5G or genetically modified foods or you know, chemical agriculture, you know, the big the mainstream is yawning at this. They're not really listening. It's not, you know, they're telling people don't worry about this stuff. It's crazy. So, I mean, you most of your speakers are plant based. Are you personally plant based? So I'm a hundred percent plant based for at least twenty five years. I'm hundred percent. You know, for me, um, all of our people who speak about health are plant based. Now, the people that speak on wireless radiation, climate change, GMOs, um, I don't know what their diet is, but they're not coming and saying that they're an expert on diet. They're saying that they have studied wireless radiation, GMOs, climate change, chemicals in the environment. So they're not talking about nutrition and diet. That's great. So I'm curious, Steve, when did you first adopt a plant-based diet and why? Um, I adopted a plant-based diet. I guess I must have read Diet for New America by John Robbins. And that got me going and I goofed around in my 20s. And then by my early 30s, 
I got committed to it and I went, you know, went all out and, you know, I guess didn't always eat as healthy as with a vegan diet. Um, in the last 15 years, I'd say I'm a completely a whole food plant-based diet. So I don't eat vegan food that's processed. I eat um, unprocessed whole foods. Nice. Did, do you, did you notice any difference in your health or appearance or anything when you adopted a plant-based diet? Um, you know, I think I've always had something going on with my blood sugar. Um, I can't say exactly what it was, but it seemed like I was more sensitive than the average person. And somehow when I ate a whole food plant-based diet, um, I think that I kind of balanced myself a lot more. I didn't have uh, the spikes that I got from, I guess, processed white flour and sugar and ice cream. Um, so I think that, uh, I think it was very positive for me. I started pretty young and I, for me, it seems, seems very good. By the way, I do want to mention, just throw this out there, you know, I think whole food plant-based is great. I completely support it. But now that Stephanie Senoff, the MIT scientist who's speaking at our conference, is saying that regular chickpeas and lentils, that when they grow them, they're using glyphosate to finish them off, that now it's probably that the verbiage for probably should be an organic whole food plant-based diet. As regular, you know, you might think you're doing great because you're eating chickpeas and lentils, but if they're finished with glyphosate and you believe like I do, the glyphosate is not something that you want in your diet, then you want to go even further than plant-based for health. You want to be a whole food plant-based eater and really an organic whole food plant-based eater. Oh my God. We're going to have to, the acronym is, the letters are going to just keep getting longer. Yes. Yes. Yeah. So how are, how many different countries, I would imagine this is a global <clears throat> summit. So you're not just getting people from the United States. Right. It is. Um, it's more than the United. We get it from all over. We get like a hundred different countries, and the YouTube videos that we make after reach people in a hundred different countries. So we feel fantastic that so many people get to see these speakers, um, and it reaches so many people. And we do think that there is a lot more control now over what information is shared. And so we're grateful that there's a way for people to get this information. I'm, um, guessing, I'm guessing you must have a whole team. You can't do this yourself. It's extraordinary. We have a lot of very hardworking people that are also committed to this. And we're trying very hard to get these great speakers like you are um, audience time. I feel very that we do a very similar thing. We're really trying to get information out from fantastic, amazing, brilliant speakers. And um, I feel very fortunate that we have a way for people to see this information. Also, these speakers who write these books they're brilliant. Their information's amazing. They spend their life doing research and they're not always promoters. They're really passionate about the research. So I feel anything I can do to get this information to people uh, feels very on point with uh, how I think I should be spending my time. Well, you get, you get some people that, that are hard to get. Like I've been trying to get Keith Block an in interview for years. And so I really appreciate your efforts because I get to see some of the people that I'm not able to get. Yes. Yes. Yeah, that's cool. Is there anybody that you are um, really dying to have or trying to get that, that just they haven't responded yet? Well, first of all, I respect that the people that we want are very busy and everything takes time. So anyone who's not available, I completely understand. And I love them anyway, but I understand they are also have a lot of important work. So someone like John Robbins would have been amazing to have, but he's done... 10,000 times more, you know, than we could have asked of him. So if it ever works out, that's amazing. On this woman, Shauna Swan, who wrote this book, Countdown, you know, we would love to get, um, we've been trying to get Dr. Mercola, even though he's not plant-based, he does speak a lot about other issues that we think are important. Um, some of the environmental authors, um, like Bill McKibben would be very nice to have, you know, some of these uh, people who speak about climate change. Uh, you know, a few, we had never gotten Neil Bernard until last year. So we were super excited to have Neil Bernard, Neil Bernard, obviously. Um, so there's still some out there that we hope will, will have a chance to join us, but we are really thrilled with who we have been able to get and amazingly feel supported by 
so many of these whole food plant-based speakers who have given their time so generously to help us with this mission. Yeah. Well, what I want to say is don't give up because I have tried for like 10 years to get Mike, uh, Michael Moss and then one day it just happened. So never give up. Yes. Yes. Agreed. Yeah. What about Jane Goodall? Have you ever thought of having her? Um, we send out a lot of email invitations. We get a lot of no's. So we've definitely reached out to Jane Goodall and probably almost anyone you could think of. Um, but, uh, you know, again, not everyone is available. So we keep trying. Right. Here's a question from a live viewer, Michelle. Why has glyphosate been banned in the EU and yet it remains prevalent in North America? Do you think it's due to lobbying? Um, you know, I guess first, let's say that I have I'm a conference organizer, so I'm happy to answer any question for fun. But we should all understand that my background is as organizing conference and I bring together amazing speakers. So as much as I like to give opinions, when I give an opinion on health or the environment, I'm just like anyone else. I am not trained, I don't have expertise, I'm just passing on information. But we will have a panel um, during our conference with Stephanie Senoff and Jeffrey Smith um, and Andrew Lau and Ronnie Cummins um, and other experts um, who have written about chemicals and glyphosate. And I think they would be you know, able to answer that best. Great, thank you. I'm sure that when the pandemic happened and you couldn't have your conference in person, you were probably disappointed, but were you pleased in a way with the results of being able to put it online and probably reach even more people? Right, well, one of the great things about doing it online is that all of a sudden Australia is no big deal. You can talk to people in England, you can talk to people um, in Europe, you can talk to people in Canada, you can talk to people you know, in Africa. And so, Although they, the hours might be a little difficult, you know, Gabe Cousins this year is speaking from Israel. Andrew Liu is talking from Australia. Um, there are people who are speaking from England, uh, Gina Newman. And you know, there's a, so it's fantastic that now these people can speak at our conference where in the past they would have had to travel here, which would have been a lot of time and effort. So in that way, I think it's really fantastic. From an emotional standpoint, it's always good to gather in person so you can have that connection, see a person, and that's always really exciting. But because there's so much important information and we want to reach all, all these speakers, um, online is really great because it gives us a chance to get any speaker without it being too much of a burden to them, where in the past, they actually had to get on a plane and fly to us. Yeah, that makes sense. You know, I before the pandemic, I produced in-person conferences, 19 of them, and often they were three days. And I would be so tired. I need like a month. I don't understand how it's even physically possible to do a 17-day conference that goes 12 hours a day for free. Right. There's no breaks. It's 9 a.m. till 9.30 p.m. for 17 days in a row. And um, I guess, you know, the theory is, you know, pretty much that uh, we, we really want these speakers to have a chance. There's a lot of people with a lot of information and, you know, 17 days is as long as we could handle it, I think. Um, but we didn't want to make it shorter because we didn't want to cut these people. We wanted to give them a full two hours to make a full presentation. We added a half hour this year so everyone could get a full half hour of questions and answers because the audience likes to have a chance to ask these people. And in this day and age, it's really good to have access to questions and answers. A lot of these people are not that available. They're not that um, accessible if you wanted to get private questions asked. So uh, I think having a half hour of questions and answers is fantastic, especially since some of these people are world renowned experts. You know, Dale Bredesen, if you're dealing with Alzheimer's, you know, you want to hear what Dale Bredesen has to say. If you want to, de if you're dealing with Parkinson's, you want to hear what Ray Dorsey has to say. These are people who studied the subject like crazy. They wrote the most recent books. They're world authorities. You want to hear what they have to say. When you did the conference in person, you also fed the people. We did. You know, we've been playing around with how to try to get the most number of people to come and to respond and to be interested. Um, so we did that, and that was really fun, and we're glad we did it. But in terms of the real mission of getting, you know, a billion people, two billion people to see and understand what's going on with the information. Um, I think the online version is the fastest way. 
Yeah, that's amazing. That is amazing. Well, I hope you, uh, you know, find a way to take, do some self care because that's got to be. An, I mean, I know what I'm doing now, just with my like every day going live. I can't imagine 12, 12 and a half hours a day for seventeen days straight. Yes. So we have a team of people that will be moderating and helping, and we will be okay. And um, I really think the thanks goes to speakers who spend so much time gathering all the best science, all the best data. So even though they're only speaking for an hour and a half, they've spent years of their life perfecting this information. So that one hour and a half that they, they're speaking, they have the most accurate, unbiased information on Alzheimer's, on Parkinson's, on cancer, on diabetes, on chronic kidney disease, on arthritis. In other words, it's just no one wants to first figure out these diseases physically, emotionally, financially, when you have it, if there's a way to avoid it. In other words, if you can avoid it, you really want to know if it, how to avoid it. Now, if there's something that can't be avoided, I understand. But if there is information on how to avoid these treacherous health conditions and environmental issues, and we just somehow didn't tell people, that's crazy. You know, it's in 1960, the statistics say that 50% of men smoke cigarettes, 50%. Doesn't that seem like we should have just told them somehow that it's bad? We don't want to come back and you know, time travel back to 2022 and say, by the way, you know, it's 50 years later. I don't know if you know this, but you know, it turns out that, and then give them information that could save their lives when we actually have a lot of that information today. We don't want to play this game where we pretend that it's confusing when a lot of the information that we're acting as if it's, it's confusing is really not confusing. And our speakers are, are sharing this. It's just not shared broadly enough. Um, so, you know, for, for example, there's a lot of foods that just are being told by even, you know, med schools, nutritionists, dietitians are saying something different than what our speakers are saying. And this is, you know, something is not right. I mean, if, if, if people like Michael Greger and Neil Bernard and Brenda Davis and, um, and all the rest of these fantastic speakers and Joel Furman and all of them are saying um, that they've studied the science and there's really clear data on what's ideal. And Dr. Esselstyn on, on heart disease and, called, and T. Colin Campbell and his books, if they all have a consensus about what is preventing disease. And yet this information is not what regular nutritionists, dietitians, or doctors tell people. Now, maybe it's way, way better than it's ever been, but still the majority of dietitians, nutritionists, and doctors today do not tell their patients, you know, the ideal thing would be to eat a whole food plant-based diet. Now, I hope it's way better than it's ever been. And I hope it's increasing rapidly but it's still not necessarily being shared. And this is really something that we want to change. I mean, you don't want people in 2022 to get old information when there's new information. Yeah, you know, it's really uh, really quite remarkable about your conferences. There, there are conferences, or at least before COVID there were, and like there were animal rights conferences and there were health conferences and environmental conferences. You literally encompass every aspect. Right. Because it does seem like they all go together. In other words, you know, your diet affects the treatment of animals. It affects the environment. It affects your health. It affects the use of chemicals. It affects antibiotic resistant bacteria. Um, you know, it affects water use. It affects soil. You know, everything is connected. Um, so we kind of feel like even though it seems like a conference on a lot of things, in the end of the day, it really is very connected. We feel like um, the food system that we currently have is abusive to the environment. It's increasing the use of GMOs. It's increasing the use of chemicals. Um, so we think that they are actually quite connected, even though they sound like they're on different topics. Yeah. What's, I'm sure you hear from people thanking you for this conference. What's the farthest or, or most obscure country you know that somebody has watched you from? Um, well, when you go to YouTube, they show you the countries and there it is all over the world. I mean, there are places in Africa that you know, uh, watch our YouTube videos and watch the conference. 
And so again, we're, you know, this is a really a fantastic thing that we're able to make this available, that this technology that exists. And it's a really fantastic thing that these speakers who <clears throat> can certainly do make a lot more money than getting involved with us are willing to, to, to volunteer their time, uh, prepare this information, spend their life gathering this, this expertise and then share it. I mean, it's really, really exciting. And um, the information is exciting. I mean, they're, they're saying things that are definitely educational and different. For example, you know, um, the first panel we're having is on Alzheimer's and Parkinson's and the authors are saying things that you're not hearing elsewhere. They're saying that they are seeing a difference. They're seeing that they're able to make a difference. They're not just saying it's fluff and positive thinking. They are saying that they have been carefully studying this and there are specific things that are preventing people from getting and progressing with these diseases. There's a lot of information that, um, you know, it's really, uh, it's really important information. So we're grateful again, the speakers are doing this. Have you ever had a situation in your conferences where on the panels, speakers either respectfully or maybe not so respectfully disagreed? Well, um, constantly. And the truth is we're trying not to be a vegan conference. We're trying to be a truthful conference. Now, if that means that we recommend whole food plant-based diets, it means that we're doing it because we believe it is the highest, you know, the most accurate information. We really don't want to fall into the trap of saying, we love, you know, Michael Clapper. Therefore, we're just going to promote Michael Clapper. We really want to try to say for Pam Popper and Michael Clapper and Brian Clement and Gabriel Cousins and Sunil Pai and David Wolf. We want to say you're here because we think you have the best information that's available, but we're not trying to only support them no matter what they say. So if another panelist or something we think differs, we do want to challenge them and we do want to ask them. So if it turned out that ice cream was the healthiest thing, um, we, you know, and as we would share that. You know, the reason we don't promote sugar and ice cream isn't because we don't like it. It's because it doesn't seem like it's healthy. Um, but so we, we're saying we're not promoting a whole food plant-based diet because we're fans of these speakers, because it's easy to be a fan of them. We're saying we're doing this because we think it is the best information for your health. If someone came along and said, look, your information's wrong, we would listen. We would try to, to listen to it. We're, we're not trying to force this and say we only believe in something. We're trying as hard as we can to be open to what we believe is the best information. And that to us seems to be information that's um, very natural, very based on organic whole food plant lifestyle. But again, because that's what the data supports, not because we say we want to believe it. And now we're only going to look for this evidence. We have looked at speakers that promote animal products. We've read this stuff. And in the end, we didn't believe that it was offering the most accurate information. What year is this, Steve, of your conference? This is our ninth conference. So the first seven were in person. Last year's was um, a 10-day uh, virtual. And this will be the first 17-day one that's virtual online. Wow, that's amazing. Did you, didn't you used to have it earlier in the year? I don't know why I think it used to be in February. Yes, you are correct. We've changed the time a few times. And yes, it, it is now... Uh, in April, it's sometimes it's been in May, January, February. It's always been, yes, we've changed it many yeah. times. That's well, I keep posting the link and telling everybody it's free. I mean, what have they got to lose? Even if you can't watch everything, you know, it, I mean, it's amazing. I love the thing you did last year. Well, yes, last year was the first virtual one. But the uh, when you announced the speakers, it was kind of like an Olympic. It was like, you know what I'm saying? The How you announced them with the music. It was like watching the Olympic Games. Yes, yes. We uh, have a big highlight video for every speaker that we've made. So we are excited to put that in before every presentation. Yeah, and you know, there are speakers that if it wasn't for your conference, I would never have heard of Dr. Sunil Pai. And we're, I mean, we're like friends now, you know, I mean, I've had, he, he's amazing. Right. And that's, that is the hope that some of these people have such unbelievable things to say. And we want the world to find out about it. The best thing possible would be if some speaker came on our, came to our conference 
and more people found out about them and they exploded and became, you know, a big part of, uh, of the health industry because we do believe that these people should have a bigger audience. And while we're trying our hardest to grow it, we're hoping that they become more well-known and their information gets seen elsewhere. Yeah, that's amazing. I appreciate that about your conference. What do you do the rest of the year? I bet it takes a long time just to plan it. You know, it's, it's a funny thing. The conference, I've always feel a little embarrassed that it takes me so long to, to get the conference set up because it seems like it should be very quick, but somehow it's an all year thing because when the conference is over, we have to edit, we go through every single video and we edit it, which means we take the original version and show that on YouTube. And then we make shorter videos from the longer one where we take a seven minute segment or a nine minute segment. And this way people, although they, they get the full version, they also get lots of the short versions. And then we play that all through the year on YouTube and Rumble and Vimeo and podcasts. And we do everything we can to get people to see and hear this information. That's great. I, how can we, other than signing up for your conference, which hopefully everybody will do, is there any way else to support your work? I guess um, there, there are a few things. One, you could um, sign up to be uh, to, on our YouTube channel. You could sign up for our membership club and share this information. Um, it would be great if people signed up for our premium membership club, which is $7 a month, because that financially supports us. So that would be great. So that would, that, those things, signing up on our membership club and our YouTube, or just signing up on YouTube and sharing our videos and signing up for our $7 a month membership club. Those would both be great things. Great. Thank you. Uh, there's a question from Sherry. Is there an opportunity for Q&A for the virtual participants? Yes, all the participants are virtual. So the half, last half hour of all 101 lectures and panels will be strictly for the virtual audience to ask their own questions. So every single panel, 16 of them, every lecture, 85, at the last half hour, we will be doing questions and answers for everyone. Have you ever had any uh, question or go rogue on you? Uh, yes, and I think it'll happen this year also. I think there's people, um, we don't screen the questions, so people will definitely have a lot of passion and energy on a lot of topics. So sometimes people say inappropriate things, and while we um, would rather they didn't, it's free and there's no screening, and people can ask whatever question they think they want to ask, and the uh, speakers do their best to answer it and handle it. Uh, yeah, I always, that's one of the things that was always scary in the live conferences, because if you don't screen them, you know, if that's what, like when you gave them the mic, sometimes things would happen. Sherry says, is there a schedule so viewers can choose which times to put aside? Yes, right at the top of the realtruthabouthealth.com, you'll see it says click here for schedule. And it shows you the whole schedule and um, all, all 101 lectures. So uh, 101. So how many per day would that be? 17, five, six, eight, eight a day, it's seven a day? So we have, um, we have five a day and then a sixth and the panel at night. So there's five lectures from 9 a.m. till 7 p.m. And then from 7 p.m. till 9.30 p.m. is the panel. Wow. Okay. Thank you. Michelle asks, are the speakers already fully lined up? And thank you for organizing these amazing conferences. Well, thank you. I appreciate it. Um, it's fully lined up and you can go on our website and see all the speakers and their full schedule. Nice. Now you asked, did you want to share some slides or something? Cause you asked about screen shares. There's something you'd like to show. I would. I want to say one thing that's <clears throat> a little bit of a, an important point to make. Um, a lot of people will say, um, oh, you're having a conference. Yeah, that's great. Yeah, no, I'm not going to, I don't, I'm not that interested because, you know, I don't know, I, I watch CNN or it doesn't really pertain to me. I'm not really interested in health. And what, you know, I want to scream to people is, look, number one, if you're getting information from people who are trying to sell you products, instead of looking after your health, there's a chance you're not getting accurate information. So even if you're, friend or your expert is smart as could be and does a lot of research, what research are they doing? So much of research today is paid for by someone who has a vested interest in a certain product or industry. So we don't want the research. So the research that your smart friend is speaking to you about 
Did that come from honest research or research that was funded by an industry that was selling a food or a drug or a chemical? So it's important not just to listen to smart people, but listen to smart people who got their information from unbiased, unfunded people who are really on your side. So if you have to speak to people, you know, if you're a brand new mom, you want to get your information on nursing, not from the people who sell formula, because the people who sell formula might have a bias, they might think their product's great, and they might not really look closely at the science of nursing with from a mom or from formula. And there's a, a difference. And this goes for every piece of information people get. So people think they're fully informed. They spoke to their doctor. The doctor said, you need to have fish in your diet. They eat fish. Why not? They spoke to the doctor. But the question is, does the doctor have the best unbiased information? Did he go for school for this? Did he get trained in this? Did they teach him this? Is this the best science? And if he says, well, there's a study, well, who paid for the study? If the fish industry paid for it, it might not have been unbiased. So in general, the, the point I'm making is it's not enough to get your information from a smart person who does a lot of research. It's got to be a smart person who got unbiased research, who actively seeked out unbiased research that wasn't paid for by someone. And then the second thing I would say is for all the people that say, I'm not interested in health. This has nothing to do with health. No one's coming to this conference because we want to because we want to learn about health. That's not what this is about. What we're saying is people like their lives and no one wants to end up with a health challenge that prevents you from having your life. So this isn't to learn about health and nutrition. This is to learn what to do so you can stay healthy and continue having the life you have with your friends, with your family, doing your passions and hobbies. So I'm not saying that you're interested in Parkinson's or Alzheimer's or diabetes or cancer or heart disease or climate change. I assume you don't care about that. But if God forbid you've got to deal with the physical, emotional, mental, relationship, that's a made up word, issues having to do with not having your health, that's catastrophic. So you want to get the most accurate information from people that care about you on how to keep yourself healthy so you can have your life the way you want on your terms. So this is not for people that want to learn about health. This is people who want to have a full free life. And because of that, you want to know the best information. If it's a fact that cooking oil, even if it's on quinoa, is carcinogenic, then you want to take your quinoa and put your olive oil or your dressing on after you don't want to heat it, if that's accurate. Now, this is what Brian Clement says from Hippocrates. Um, health, you want this, and you want to then also figure out what's his source. But again, there are nuances to this. You know, if, um, if Joel Furman says that he's been watching long-term vegans, he's seeing the results of long-term vegans, which is the most interesting thing anyone's ever said to you, because it's one thing for people to say, you know, they think this, they think this. What you really want to say is Joel Furman, what happened to the vegans you've been watching long-term? And if he says some of them got dementia and the problem is they didn't have enough DHA EPA, that's not a little side note. That's not like a little thing like you don't need to know. Like we really need to know that if that is the facts. And he's saying you need DHA EPA because he's seeing long-term vegans who have dementia. Well, that's got to be studied and asked and followed up. So we really want to get this information. We, we want to get at, want to make sure our information is accurate and comes from unbiased sources. And we want to also make sure we get the information, even if we don't consider us people that are considered that are interested in health. Even if you don't care about health at all, you want to stay healthy. Absolutely. And, yeah. You know, and, and a lot of people, it depends your age. I'm 58. And unfortunately, my peers, you know, I'm, there are things that I wish weren't happening. People who are my age who are dealing with real life health issues. I didn't have that when I was 28. When I was 28, no matter what you did, it still seemed to be okay. 58 real things are happening. And when real health issues happen, 
everyone runs and says it had nothing to do with their lifestyle. Not everyone, but a lot of people say this has nothing to do with lifestyle because no one wants to be accountable. But the science is saying, no, your diet and lifestyle are accountable for many of the health issues. So you definitely would want to learn this. Have you been able to influence hey, any, any family or friends through your work or through your conference? <clears throat> Have I been able to? Mm -hmm. um, it seems very challenging to influence family and friends. So I would say that I've not been that effective in influencing families and friends, at least I'm not conscious. So I don't know if I have. Um, so I don't know. I mean, I really don't know. My mother hasn't changed her diet. My father <laughs> never changed his diet. So a lot of people don't listen. But I'm hoping that the people that do really want to stay healthy, that they will be open. So I realize that for many people, they, they don't want to change. It doesn't matter. And I'm not saying that, that they should. Everyone should do whatever's right for them. But for people that really value staying healthy, then I think they would want this information. And by the way, I do want to say one aggressive thing just to make this point. If you're a woman and you think that it doesn't really, you know, that your husband's eating, there's nothing you could do. If God forbid it's this scenario could be the other way, a man with your wife. But if you're a woman and your husband is the one who's working and you've been watching the children, and that might not be the case, but, and God forbid something happens to him, this affects you. You suddenly don't have his financial support. You suddenly might have to go back into the workforce. You suddenly don't have the love and support and companionship. So like, it's not, yeah, you, know, you know, just a sad thing. It's logistically a terrible thing if your partner is a health consequences. And it goes without saying, if you're a dad and God forbid something is a health issue with a, a mom who's, you know, who's the critical, plays a critical role with children and also possibly, you know, and also works and, you know, in, in many cases is, could be the one providing the income. So it's really, it's not just you, but if the, your partner has health issues, this affects your life dramatically. So I want to, you know, make sure everyone understands that. And, and for all the people, when we talk about autism and you say, ah, I don't know, that doesn't really affect me. If God forbid you or your grandchild have an autistic child, you suddenly, a tremendous amount of your life has just changed. And even though you're going to love and support that child, you are now responsible. This child might not grow up and ever develop. And you now have to take all your time and make sure to take care of this child. So it's not just, it's you, it's terrible if you deal with a health issue. It's terrible if a partner has to deal with it. And it's also if a child or a grandchild. So I'm trying to make this a point and it's a little aggressive and I don't mean to be scary, but like we really keep getting advertisements that keep saying, go with the flow, enjoy your life. You only live once, nothing that, you know, French fries aren't gonna kill you. Fried food's not such a big deal. And you might want to evaluate it. Like it really is not a bargain to eat a little bit of food that tastes good and then find out that you or your partner or your children have to deal with lifetime health consequences. That's amazing. Why do you, what do you think people's resistance to this information is? Because they just don't want to change their habits? Well, I mean, first, you know, remember that people are bombarded with messages the opposite all day and night. There are soda commercials, there are sugar commercials, there's fried food commercials, there's fast food commercials, there's commercials showing sizzling steaks and, you know, and, and, and all the oil, salt, sugar, processed food, chips, and the people are jumping out of airplanes and singing songs, and they're making it like, if you care about your health, ah, oh, you're one of those people, you're, you, you know, you have to, oh my God, just go with the flow, just don't worry about it, don't be so uptight. Everyone eats this way. It doesn't hurt you. That's the marketing message. And, you know, that's not because those people love you. The people making commercials do not love you. You know, get that through your head. The people selling you these products that are detrimental to your health and the planet, they do not love you. They are trying to sell you something. And it's up to us to, to realize that not only are they trying to sell us, they're trying to sell your friends 
so that when you go out, your friends roll their eyes because you don't want to have live an unhealthy lifestyle. Yeah. What do you think about this concept? I just heard of it. Have you ever heard of reduced sectarianism where we're never going to get people to go plant-based? So let's just get them to eat less meat. Do, do you think that works? You know, I think that everyone on the planet is different. And just because I think that people should be eating a certain way, that's my issue. It's not everyone's, everyone's allowed to think and decide and choose for themselves. So I think it's best to tell people the truth about the consequences and then, you know, hope that they do whatever they do and be grateful for any steps they take. So clearly a lot of people are not interested in adopting a whole food plant-based diet. So if you're saying, is there, there's a movement to get them to reduce from 21 meals a day that had animal products to seven, is that good? It's fantastic. But we shouldn't make up and pretend that the that this is going to solve the problem. And there is, you know, you know, Richard Oppenlander is going to speak about diet and its effect on the planet. I mean, there are catastrophic, terrifying environmental and health consequences that are happening. And nothing short than the most radical change is needed. Now, is a reducitarian good? You know, I guess if someone smokes two packs a day of cigarettes and you can get them to cut down to six cigarettes, is that good? I think that's fantastic. I think it's a huge improvement. It's still a disaster that they're smoking cig six cigarettes a day. It's a full-blown health crisis waiting to happen, and you would do anything to avoid smoking six cigarettes a day. But compared to two packs, it's good. So is a reducitarian good? I mean, it's great, but if the planet blows up and you get sick because you didn't become fully go all the way, then, then it really wasn't good. So I'm not saying you should or shouldn't, you should do what you want, but we shouldn't lie about the truth. A lot of us want to, you know, make up that you could do what you want and the results are the same. And when you're young, you can, but eventually a lot of people have health issues and we want to probably act overreact on the healthy side, as opposed to underreact, because there's so many things we can't even control, such as the air pollution and what's in our water. So there's enough things we can control, you know, maybe wireless radiation we're exposed to. And so at the, I would say we should be going overboard, not underboard when it comes to health choices. Yeah, that makes sense. So people don't seem to believe this is free, but it is free. There's no catch. It's 100% free. Right. So this is, um, this, this is the only conference that I'm aware of that is this long, that's 100% free. And that, again, remember, we sell no products. We have no sponsors. We have no advertisers. We did in the past. We stopped that because we were afraid it would affect our ability to tell the truth. That if we were getting too much money from a juicer or a sauna person, we thought we might, not that we would lie, but we would just get too excited about the benefits of saunas or juicing when really, it might not have been appropriate response. So we think this is our best chance to tell the truth. And we are praying that people will support us. They'll pay the $7 a month membership club and we can get thousands of people and hopefully we'll be able to keep doing this. We definitely do need the support and really hope people will do that. But again, I do feel like this is not a small piece that for us on our journey and our mission, we feel like us taking no sponsors, no advertisers, no commercial, you know, not selling anything is a real thing. We really want to give people information and, you know, we don't want to, we don't want to turn this into where we say, don't do this, but, you know, buy our probiotics or our enzymes or something that we're just saying because we, they're our sponsor. So yes, this is a hundred percent free and we really hope that it's making a difference. I hope that it's reaching people. I hope it, you know, it has an impact. And I promise you that the speakers we got were not filler. We did not say, I know a guy down the street, he works in the health food store. He knows a lot about nutrition. Maybe he's available. I'd say I've gone the other end. I've been borderline obnoxious and not let great, amazing speakers speak because somehow I didn't feel they had a I mean, we've had you know, different standards, but one of the main standards is that they've written a book on it. We're somewhat flexible with that, but we've really tried to bring you 
the very best people in the world that we could find. We did not just say anyone. I mean, there's been so many amazing people that we didn't get, but we really feel like the people we got are people that you would want to hear from. Wow. Thanks. And Amelie says, when do you get to see the replays? So like, you know, sometimes these summits, like they have the replays only available for 24 hours right after the first time. Okay. So the replays are permanent. So what we do is we, we, this is what happens. One, you watch the conference live. Two, the replay will put up on the real truth about health.com probably the day. We'll then later take it down when we have an edited version that has an intro and some other things and takes out my intro, the introduction and all. So, but it'll be up. And when the other one comes down, the, the, the revised one will go right up. So right away, it's on the real truth about health. And then throughout the year, it goes up on YouTube because the YouTubes we have to edit into shorter videos. Um, and then uh, if you don't have time to watch the whole thing and want us to find the most important things, which is what we do in our documentaries that you can get in our premium membership club, then you can get that. That's great. So did you prepare some slides or just you, is there something you want to show us? Well, um, how about if I just show you, go through the panels quickly with you, if that's okay? Yeah, of course. We'd love to hear more about it because it's starting any day now. Starts uh, a week from uh, tomorrow. Tell me when you could see my screen. I can see them perfectly. You see the speakers? Yeah. Okay. So let me just tell you a little bit about <clears throat> what I'm thinking and why we're doing this with these speakers. You ready? Yep. <clears throat> okay. So one, whatever you think about Alzheimer's and Parkinson's, to me, they're... Oh, we just lost sound. Steve. They're a nightmare. I don't, there's no way to say everything in life is good things. These just seem like a nightmare. It's something we want to do anything we can to prevent. And in the world of health, for a long time, people have been saying, if you eat a healthy, organic, whole food, plant-based diet, you could affect your weight. You could affect type two diabetes. You could affect heart disease. You could affect strokes. It reduces your chance of getting cancer. But most people have left out the topic of Alzheimer's and Parkinson's. So. Dale Bredesen wrote a book on this. He's really one of the world's, I don't really know enough to say where he stands, but he seems to be one of the world's most renowned experts on, park, on, on, on Alzheimer's. He wrote a book that I read that was really encouraging. It wasn't fluffy like, oh, you know, maybe it'll help. He was really citing data and specific things that you should be doing that reduce your chances of dementia. So that was amazing. And then Ray Dorsey wrote a similar book on Parkinson's and they found very specific information about these topics. Steve Blake has also done studies on dementia and memory. And these three guys, I mean, you know, this is a dream that somehow they're willing to come and say, yeah, we spent the last 40 years of our life doing nothing but studying this stuff. And now we're going to sum it up in one quick panel and share it with you so you have a dramatically better chance of avoiding this in your life. Then the next panel has <clears throat> people who have devoted a tremendous amount of time to this. We have a cardiologist, Steve Loam, who's an expert on cardiovascular disease and erectile dysfunction, um, is a medical doctor. We have Milton Mills, who has a fantastic perspective on why we should or shouldn't eat animals. He's been lecturing and speaking, and he's a medical doctor. We have Juliana Heaver, who's a nutritionist, who's really in the field, um, who is, you know, she's not just saying, this is what I think. She's dealing with people, you know, in the real world. So we're going to say to her, what happened to the last 500 people you saw who came in with obesity and diabetes and heart disease? What happened? Did the whole food plant-based diet work? Did it not work? And then we have Chef AJ, who's going to also be there, who has written several books and we think is a great addition. And we're very excited to hear your perspective on weight loss and what you know from all your learning. Then we have a very intense panel that, um, you know, Beth Lambert's the one who, who did a study called, uh, did a book, wrote a book called Compromised Generation, saying that the kids born now have 50, used to have like 12% chronic diseases. Now there's they have 
Um, Michelle Perro is an authority on glyphosate and GMOs and kids gut health. And Anna Marie Clement's been practicing a raw food vegan diet for 40 years. Um, these people have a lot to say on women's health and children's health. Then we have, you know, another panel. Now this panel is the one people don't want to watch. <clears throat> They're saying, yeah, I'm not interested in the wireless radiation 5G. And I'm saying, I don't blame you. I don't want to be interested in it either. I want to ignore this subject. I definitely, definitely, I'm praying that someone will email us and say, don't waste your time. It's all nonsense. It's fine. But that's not what the data seems to be saying. So we got Martin Paul, who, if this was any other subject, it's hard to get the world's authority. But because wireless radiation is not a mainstream topic, he's available to speak with Theodora Scarato, who runs the Environmental Health Trust with Deborah Davis and is studied and they've all these studies. I mean, look, you wanted that. You do whatever you want with your cell phone and your wireless. Do whatever you choose. But please, you want to know what they're saying. You want to know what they're saying about reducing your risk of exposure to wireless radiation. <clears throat> now, this next topic, <clears throat> panel 30, it is illegal to not watch this panel. You must get everyone you know, and you it's a law. You are not allowed to miss this panel. Cancel your vacation. Don't go to your son's graduation. Do, don't go to work. Absolutely, positively, you cannot miss this panel. This is, it's absolutely criminal to not see what these people say. I would recommend John Abramson's book that came out two weeks ago called Sickening and Robert Yohu's book. <clears throat> More than any books I've ever seen, they write about the medical industry. And you don't want my opinion. No, you don't want anyone's opinion. You want the data. You want to know exactly what you need to know about an industry that's 23% of the U.S. economy. I've been trying to get John Abramson to come for 10 years. He's been, he's a, he, he teaches at Harvard for the last 25 years. He's one of the most highly credible, credentialed people who's ever written on this subject. Um, you know, this is an absolute essential panel to every doctor, every nutritionist, every dietitian, everyone has to hear what these guys are saying. Okay. The next one is the most effective preventative and healing techniques and action steps aside from diets. So all the time, they're going to talk to you about whole food, plant-based diets, but do you want to hear from the other people? Alan Goldhammer has overseen 20,000 water fasts. Yes or no, do we want to, if you want the bottom line on water fasting, instead of goofing around trying to figure it out, let's hear what he has to say. Clinton Uber, I believe, is in his 80s. He is the guy who, who, who invented the subject of grounding or earthing, where you, the benefits of walking on the earth. There's no one tell, telling you about this. Here we have the two authorities, one on grounding, one on fasting. Gerald Curatole is the first dentist we've ever had, and he is a biologic dentist who is completely immersed in trying to find the best ways to um, be a healthy dentist. Um, and as much as dentistry is not our focus, almost everyone has questions on dentistry. Sunil Pai is both a medical doctor and he studied with Andrew Weil and other alternative um, healers. So he's got the natural point of view in the mainstream and he eats a whole food plant-based diet. So we want to hear his perspective. And then I don't know how many of you know about David Wolf, but, you know, in the beginning, I followed Brian Clement. I followed David Wolf. I followed, you know, T. Colin Campbell and Caldwell Lesselstein and Michael Gregg. David Wolf was a raw food plant based guy, but he's experimented with every alternative thing. He's been a pioneer in, you know, in. Um, froze. Can you still see me? Okay. Yeah, you, you, your voice froze just for a moment. Okay, good. Okay, so it's this panel, which is going to talk about alternative things outside of just um, outside of uh, outside of just uh, nutrition. Okay. Now. 
Uh, the next panel after this, uh, hmm, a little problem with my screen here. Let's see if I can get it to unscrew freeze. Oh, good. The environment right. panel. Let's see, I've tried, I'll move faster. I'll try to just get it. Okay. So then after, after this one, still, hold on. I think we're almost there. Okay. Then we have plant-based cardiologists and gastroenterologists. So we have these five experts, medicators, and talk about uh, 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 heart disease and um, gastroenterology, which is stomach issues. Um, and I guess I'm not going to, I'll have to just skip that because I can't seem to get to get it straight. Then we have whole food plant-based. So Christy Funk, who wrote about breast cancer, Robert Bard, who talks about an alternative um, way to do screening. So for all you people that are saying, well, I like screening, but I'm concerned about the radiation from mammographies and stuff. He is an expert in alternative way. He uses this special technique. Thomas Campbell is the co-author of the China study and Patrick Quinlan has studied cancer. So these are all people that we think are whole food plant-based. Robert Bard is not actually whole food plant-based. The other three are, and but he's specifically an expert on the technique to avoid the radiation from mammography or elsewhere. Okay, then panel 54, whole food plant-based doctors. So here you go. You have T. Colin Campbell, Kim Williams, Caldwell Esselstein, Heather Schenkman, and Dr. Robert Osfield, who we've never had you know, so here we have five plant-based whole food experts. We've got 200 years of experience. Um, you know, I wouldn't take it for granted that these guys are going to always be available to give these lectures. You know, one day T. Colin Campbell's 88 might say, I've had enough, I'm retiring. So, um, you know, it's a, an honor and a privilege to have an opportunity to speak to those people. Then how to live a long, healthy life. So now we got Brian and Gabriel Cousins who are raw foodists. Joshua Hellman, who's worked at Hippocrates and True North, Dr. Nick Delgado and Udo Rasmus to talk about, um, you know, vegan diets and how to do it with a raw, raw vegan diets and what they've seen in the blood under the microscope. Now, the next one, how your diet can slow down climate change, resource depletion, environmental destruction. Do you know Richard Oppenlander, Chef AJ? I do very well. He's a wonderful speaker and his information is is crucial. Yeah. So this is, I guess, you know, this has got to be the most important panel of the whole conference. The three of them, Dr. Silish Rowe, Glenn Mercer, and Dr. Oppenlander wrote books about how diet is causing environmental catastrophe, resource depletion. Um, Richard Oppenlander spoke at our conference, um, you know, for several years. Um, his 37-year-old son died a year and a half ago from brain cancer, and he had spent the last several years taking care of him and doing everything he could to find you know, solutions. And he was a hero in what he was trying to do to support his son and his son's family. Um, and now for the first time in many years, he's come back and he's back to doing the research and helping us. Um, and he is a hero of mine for what he's doing. And I think the three of them are doing, you know, the most important work they could be doing. Um, this next one is... Ocean Robbins, Will Tuttle, Sherry Cobb, Charles Horn, and Hope Bahonic. This one talks about how we mistreat animals and how it's destroying the planet. So this is a combination of saying, hey, what would the way we raise animals tortures them in the most inhumane way, and we're also destroying the environment. So we think that this is an incredibly important panel. And I think, you know, I know from YouTube videos that the number one way to get lower YouTube videos is to talk about factory farming. They immediately our audience gets cut in third, you know, two thirds, but it doesn't change anything. In other words, it's not good to put your head in the sand. We want to know how we're treating the animals that we're eating. We don't want to pretend that we're not, uh, you know, horrifically abusing them and destroying the environment. So that's a great panel. The next one will be about health rights and health freedoms. This is about making sure you're getting the most accurate information. We don't want there to be a ban on information on supplements. We don't want there to be a ban on, on homeopathy or herbs. 
We want free flowing information on health, nutrition, the food system, the medical system, and the environment. These people, Stacey Malkin works for the US Right to Know. She is feverishly fighting for your, you know, for accurate information on GMOs, et cetera. Then we have six people talking about GMOs, chemicals, and the food system. I mean, these people are you know, heroes, they're warriors, they're ferociously fighting against, you know, the GMO industry, the chemical industry, the mainstream food system. You know, this is Stephanie Senoff is saying that in the year 2032, 50% of the people born are going to be autistic, autistic if we keep going this rate. She has a lot to say about glyphosate. Jeffrey Smith is the hero of the GMO movement. Julian Cribb just wrote a book about, you know, the catastrophic famine and problems if we don't stop doing what we're doing. Ronnie Cummins is, talks about the food system. Joanna wrote a book on, it's called Silent Winter, and Andrew Liu writes about pesticides. I know this is inconvenient. I know it's so much more fun to talk about vegan pizza. We love talking about vegan pizza and ice cream. It's so fun. I love it. I love reading veg news about all the new vegan cheeses. It's amazing. But you know, what do you want me to say? I mean, I, I want this to not be true. I, the fact that, you know, that there's something like 90,000 chemicals and only six have been taken off the market. I don't know what to tell you. These people have something to say. I am praying that people will listen and I am praying that they will get this information out there, whether it's by their social media, their own conference, their own book, they'll go to their school board. They'll go to, you know, we need uh, everyone to take up these causes. Then we have, you know, a whole food plant-based panel with John McDougall, Michael Clapper, and a prostate cancer ex-naturopathic doctor, Gio Espinosa, who leans towards whole food plant-based and recommends it. Um, and, you know, Michael Clapper and John McDougall, I mean, they've got wisdom and years of real life experience. These are people that we all lean on to, you know, to get information and we're thrilled that they're involved. And then we have a women's health panel for women who... These women wrote, these are plant-based doctors who've written about autoimmune disease. Um, many of these people or all these people have appeared on the Chef AJ show. Uh, we think they're a great addition. So that's it. You want me to show you quickly the video from the conference? Yeah, well, why don't we end with that, Stephen? If you don't mind, I just want to quickly ask you a question because you had mentioned that when you have animal rights, about you lose about two thirds of your audience. And I have found the same thing on my show that we get hundreds, if not more than a thousand people watching when we have a doctor like John McDougall on. But when I have Ingrid Newkirk on from PETA, it's like nobody tunes in. And uh, so I appreciate you saying that because sometimes the most important things are the ones that people don't want to watch. Yeah, um, I think that this is, you know, and I guess if I was going to sum up what I've learned from all my YouTube views, I would say, and this isn't meant to be a good thing or a bad thing, it's just what it is. What seems to cause the most views on YouTube is if people believe it affects them. So animal rights, GMOs, wireless radiation, climate change, as long as people think it doesn't affect them, they get you know half the views or a quarter of the views as a view on as a video on how to prevent cancer, how to prevent diabetes, how to lose weight. But um, this is sort of a lie because these other topics do affect us. It might be a little bit indirect, but they do affect us, and the climate affects us, and the treatment of animals and the environment does affect us. So I am hoping that there'll be a dramatic increase in consciousness, and people will choose to. Um, to want to hear about these things and learn about it. You know, for all the people that are plant-based, it's great to do it for health reasons. It's critical to do it for environmental reasons. But on an emotional level, when you see and hear the treatment of animals, that could be the thing that turns your brain from sort of interested in being plant-based to committed for life. Yeah, what, what gets the most views? Things like health, weight loss, those kind of things? Um, the most views is still um, driven by the speaker. So meaning that if, you know, if Caldwell Esselstyn or T. Colin Campbell or Michael Greger or Neil Bernard speak or John McDougall or, you know, or Brian Clement or, um, uh, uh, you know, all of these other people speak, um, those videos uh, 
and, 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 and the other popular, you know, well-known speakers, those get the most. Um, and then if the speaker isn't as well-known, the topic of how to lose weight, how to prevent cancer, how to prevent Alzheimer's, you know, are next. Things that affect people personally, I think um, if they don't know the speaker, uh, if they're not as well, well-known speaker, that's what people are most drawn to. But like I'm saying, just because people aren't as interested in pesticide and chemical um, videos, that is critical information if you're trying to prevent a disease, because there's a lot of data saying that there's a link between toxins in our environments and your health. Yeah, thank you. Well, we, we could, why don't we end with showing the video, but I do want to thank you so much for your, your tireless efforts on behalf of the animals, the planet and human health. I, I know what it's like to produce a three-day conference, so I can only imagine what you must be doing because you get this one going for 17 days. I don't think there's ever been one that long. Yeah. Well, also, let me just thank you, AJ. You're doing heroic work. It's phenomenal what you're doing. I realize that what you do, there's not a lot of money in having a podcast and the fact that you've devoted your life is amazing. And I'm very grateful to your audience who's willing to listen to these speakers and take this stuff seriously and are all in their own way um, fighting. Like I'm having a conference and I actually get a lot of credit. People say nice things to me, but the people who are in your audience, a lot of times they don't get credit. So the fact that they're sharing this information and promoting it, they are heroes for doing this. And I'm very thankful to all of them. So thank you. Well, and thank you for inviting me to be a speaker. I am so honored and I can't wait to, uh, to watch the conference and participate in the conference this year. Fantastic. Okay, now if I play this, will you hear it or is it just going to be going through my speakers or? Usually it works. If, since, since I can see your screen, you, almost always it does work. Okay, here we go. <laughs> It's been said only the richest people in the world have access to the most cutting edge health information that most other people will never know until now. Here at The Real Truth About Health, we've brought the world's most knowledgeable people on health all together in one place. We've asked them the most pressing questions and uncovered perhaps the most eye-opening story you've ever heard all told in their own words, in ways only they can. That's why we've condensed the most critical data from their books, their movies, their complete lifetimes of work and research on the most important, unbiased health information in this way, saving you the enormous amount of time, money, and energy it takes to unearth these answers that will actually add years to your life and life to your years. What you do now is up to you, but never again can you say you just didn't know. Welcome to the 2022 Real Truth About Health free 17-day live online conference, the largest health conference in history. 17 days, 75 world-renowned speakers, 85 lectures, 16 panels, and 30 minutes of live Q&A at the end of each one to answer your questions. How long you're gonna live and the quality of your life is linked to the micronutrient bang per caloric buck. I didn't go into medicine to manage chronic disease, we to cure people. People who adhere to these diets, particularly when they're using fats and so forth from animal origin, are more likely to die. The world's top medical doctors, naturopathic doctors, dietitians, nutritionists, scientists, professors, authors, and researchers share the most powerful secrets on what the latest nutritional and scientific studies say about preventing heart disease, cancer, obesity, diabetes, Alzheimer's, Parkinson's, arthritis, kidney disease, and other chronic health conditions. A deep dive on what the science says about our health, nutrition, the food system, medical system, and the environment. 
the real truth about health has no advertisers or sponsors and sells no products. Just you and the most important information on how to keep you and your family healthy. The time to register is now. 9 a.m. to 9.30 p.m. every day for 17 straight days. April 1st to April 17th, 2022. Sign up for free today at therealtruthconference.com. Wow. Thank you so much, Stephen. I cannot wait. Thank you so much. Thank you. And thanks all of you for watching another episode of Chef AJ Live. Please come back tomorrow at 11 a.m. Pacific time when my guest is Kristen Hong. She's going to be talking about her new book, Fridge Love. And everyone, please sign up for this conference right now. Share it with your friends. It's free. There's no catch. And I can't wait to see you.